Okay, it's a little past six o'clock, so we'll begin. Thank you for joining us this evening. I'm Audra Bove, the Superintendent of Schools. This is the second in a series of information sessions and forums that we're running on the three building projects that we have going to referendum vote in November. Uh, those three uh, schools that we're looking at is the Hussey School in Berwick, North Berwick Elementary School, and Hanson School, Lebanon Elementary. Uh, just to give you a little bit of background, we began looking and starting to plan for um, additions to the three buildings a few years back. We got a little waylaid because of COVID, uh, but we're, we're moving ahead. And some of the points that I wanted to just mention and highlight to you about why we are looking at additions in the, in the three towns, um, I'll spend a little bit of time on that right now. The first thing is, is that we have had population increases in all three towns, specifically Berwick and Lebanon have seen steady increases. Going to, to speak to the Lebanon Elementary Building, uh, the Lebanon Elementary Building was built in 1953, and um, that building is not ADA compliant, and it has really um, gone its full life expectancy. It's been very well taken care of. It's been uh, maintained really, really well with projects and uh, different types of things throughout the years, but we're at a point right now where, given the fact that we've got some population increase in Lebanon and the fact that that building was built in 1953 and it's really exhausted its lifespan for us, that we are looking at putting a major addition onto Hanson School to absorb the fourth and fifth grade at Lebanon Elementary and um, having that building no longer be used for school. Um, so that is part of what those are part of the things that we've been looking at, but, but way down the line, we are going to be housing um, preschools in our towns and our buildings. That's been a directive from the state. And planning ahead, we know that that means that we're going to have several grade levels, several classes on sections of students at the preschool level coming in. So we need to be able to um, have them attend our schools in uh, compliant classrooms that meet the criteria for size and space for them and bathroom use and accessibility. So with that said, we have a presentation on the three building projects this evening, that's the overview. And what I would like to just point out before we begin is that um, the next session that we have is September 8th and that will be at Lebanon Elementary School and that will be at six o'clock p.m. and that's just to talk about the Lebanon uh, plan. And then September 9th will be in North Berwick, and that's just to talk about the North Berwick plan. And then the following week, September 13th, will be at Hussey School to talk about the additions to Hussey School. Each of our um, elementary schools are different and have different character so you're, and different challenges. And I think as we talk through this this evening, I, it will give you a better idea of what our challenges are in each of our buildings and how we're going to address those challenges. So we'll start with Alan from CHA Architecture, well, CHA, and they're the architectural firm that we're working with uh, on our building project. So, Alan Cunahom, thank you. <clears throat> uh, yeah, thank you very much. So, uh, my name is Alan Cunahom. I'm principal with uh, CHA Architecture. We're located in Portland, Maine. Um, so we've got, uh, we're going to go over both, all three schools this evening. We've got a lot of ground to cover. And um, we're going to start off with, um, we're going to start off with uh, Lebanon Hanson Elementary School and we'll go through each project. Ashley is going to come up here. She's been working on the plans very diligently and get every, getting everything in place. She's going to um, talk about the plans and then uh, Neil's going to talk about the site plans and how those are arranged and then I'll talk about the budget on the schools and how those come together for each school and then we'll have a wrap up at the end. So rather than me standing up here and talking continually, I want to introduce some of the members of our team and have them talk directly to their portions of the work. So with that, I'll uh, turn it over to Ashley. Or is it, uh, um, I think, let me, we're gonna start off with the site plans, right? Okay, or no, you're gonna do the, I'm sorry, Ashley, you're gonna do the
All right. Um, so my name is Ashley. Um, so starting off with um, some of the project features, um, things that will help um, mitigate some of the issues that are at um, the Lebanon Hansen schools. Um, so right now the current capacity at um, Lebanon and Hansen combined um, is 24 classrooms or um, 384 students. Um, and then the proposed design, um, we're looking to uh, bring that up to 32 classrooms, seven of which will be um, pre-KK and um, have a capacity of 512 students. And this doesn't include um, special programs. It's just um, regular K classrooms, first, second, third, fourth, fourth fifth. Um, and then, so uh, this project also includes the demolition of the Lemon School um, and having all of that program um, added on to Hanson. Um, and I guess I'll explain more when we go through the plans, but um, so we're going to provide a single point of entry um, and really uh, have a single main entrance so that everyone goes in and out through one point um, with greater visibility and entry control for security. Um, and then we're also providing a, a separate drop-off loop for parents and buses um, to mitigate some of that traffic. Um, we're also increasing the parking. Uh, from 112 spaces to 262 and um, we're looking at doing a satellite parking lot for um, overflow and events um, where the Lebanon school is right now. Um, we're also, so inside the building, um, we're going to have a new maker space and project space for hands-on um, activities and um, we're going to uh, do a lot of ADA upgrades um, and make the whole building accessible, um, especially with the bathrooms. Um, we are also upgrading the elevators, adding AC in the new addition so that uh, it can be used all year round. Uh, we're upgrading um, the special needs um, spaces and we're expanding the kitchen, um, adding a new gymnasium and a stage, which um, the gym includes seating for 500 people for events. Um, we're gonna have new band and music rooms, new admin um, and nurse suites. Um, and more importantly, we're gonna have all students and staff under one roof. Um, so everyone will have access to this. Um, and then outside, we're going to have an upgraded playground and new play fields. So I'll hand it over to Neil. Thanks, Ashley. I'm Neil Raposo. I'm a civil consultant. Uh, we've been working uh, with the school district for many years now, uh, and we've been through a lot of the changes that, uh, that we've seen uh, have been required by the schools. and. Uh, with this uh, with this round of upgrades, we're really trying to address uh, all the all the issues and and kind of shortcomings that have arisen just from the growing population and the needs of the population. Uh, as you can see, this is uh, the existing uh, the existing site plan out here at the campus at Lebanon and Hanson. Uh, the existing Lebanon Elementary School uh, is planned to be uh, to be demolished and to reuse uh, that location as that satellite parking. Uh, like Ashley was talking about. Uh, currently, the, the soccer fields and the baseball uh, diamond uh, that are shown here that are existing, kind of kitty-cornered near the parking area, uh, they're not in the best shape. There's some you know, exposed uh, ledge out there. There are areas where you, you have some wet areas that are, that are not all that playable uh, throughout the whole sports seasons. And of course, the, the traffic and the uh, parent drop-off areas are a big area of concern for these sites. 
uh, due to the fact that there are you know, so many locations where there's traffic exiting and entering uh, onto the site. And while, uh, while Upper Guinea Road is a tough, it's a tough road to get in and out of just due to its, its, uh, its dimensions and layout here, uh, with the way that it's set up uh, as is, it compounds the issue with uh, forcing a lot of the traffic to run through the campus and kind of come around around that loop. Uh, and it creates, it creates a more difficult situation with, uh, uh, you know, with parents and with children uh, walking and, and getting dropped off in the area. And also, as I'm sure many of you know, the main office for this building, for the Hanson School, is located on that, uh, on that left side of the building over near the loop where there is no, is no uh, parking for, for drop-offs or anything like that. So it's one of the issues we're going to try and, try and correct with our... Uh, with our plan here. So this is the conceptual plan for the new development. Uh, it's pushed the majority of, of the, the everyday parking off to the right side of the lot here. Uh, we're trying to implement a, a very uh, long, looks kind of, you know, kind of a serpentine route for drop off, but that's so we can get as many cars queued in there as possible and not have that, uh, those waiting cars spill out onto the main road. Uh, and again, this pulls, uh, this pulls that main office kind of up to the top of where that new proposed bus loop is. And as Ashley described, it provides a much more secure, much safer area to, you know, to be able to, uh, to observe. Uh, the area over to the left of the Hanson School, we've taken out that, uh, the bus loop and provided for more of a, an outdoor learning space. And as you can see, the, where Lebanon School once was, it's a larger satellite parking area. Uh, up to the north here, uh, we've laid out uh, the area that's available uh, for sports fields, being improved uh, baseball field and soccer field, uh, and, and pulling that all back together. Uh, we've also incorporated into the design um, the necessary uh, BMPs, which are uh, stormwater treatment practices that would be required by uh, the Department of Environmental Protection to make sure that uh, we could get all our permitting here. So, I mean, that's, that's the, the short version of it. Uh, like I said, this is conceptual, a conceptual design, but we put a lot of time and effort into making sure this is a, you know, a feasible, uh, feasible project for the towns moving forward here. I'm going to hand it back over to Ashley to describe uh, some of the inner workings of, of the additions here. All right, thanks, Neil. Um, so looking at the first floor, um, so right now uh, we have the main entrance um, right on, right in the center of the new addition there um, in yellow. So um, everyone will eg enter and exit through that uh, main entry and directly adjacent to it in the light green is the new admin suite. Um, so uh, the main office will have direct visibility to um, the parking, um, the drop-off loops, and the main entrance. Um, and then across from that is the new gymnasium up above um, and a stage on the right. Um, and then in the new wing uh, is where we have the pre-K and K classrooms in the light blue. Um, and then in between that we have the new band and music rooms. Um, and then continuing down the hall um, to the existing building, um, we have at the top um, the expanded kitchen in light purple. Um, and the existing cafeteria. Um, and then if you start moving south, um, we have the public library, which will um, be expanded to accommodate a maker space for students to use. Um, and then a, a new art room. And across from that will be the first grade classrooms. And down the hall um, in the south, the southern wing will be um, all of the behavior classrooms. 
and upstairs on the second floor. Um, so the new wing will house um, third, fourth, and fifth grade. I think I'm reading that right. Um, and then in the existing uh, building, uh, we'll have 10 more uh, general classrooms. Um, and then, so on this slide, we have a couple of um, 3D images of what uh, the new addition could look like. Um, so we have a really graphic, um, colorful wall um, drawing you to the main entrance. And um, the new wing will have um, some brick and metal panel to kind of um, reflect the existing building. Um, and then you can see the two drop-off loops in front um, in the bottom image. So next is the budget. Okay, thanks Ashley. So um, you're gonna see we have three budgets that we've developed for each one of these projects. Uh, even though we'll be, right now we're anticipating bidding these projects all as one project. Um, so our, our budgets are usually broken down into three parts, construction, uh, administrative costs and reserves, and then fees and services. Uh, the construction line item up there at the top is when we bid the project, that's, a pro that's the number that the contractor uh, will work towards, or that's the bid that we expect for construction. Uh, that includes uh, everything that um, Ashley just described in terms of ADA upgrades uh, and additions um, and site work. So uh, that's the whole uh, portion of the construction. Uh, the second one is administrative costs and reserves, um, which typically might have land purchase, but there's also a line item in there for movable equipment. And we've sort of benchmarked the, the structure of these budgets as to what we would expect if it was a funded project with the Department of Education in the state of Maine. This is, um, uh, this is what we would expect for a percent of furnishings to go to equip the new rooms. Uh, that would include technology, um, et cetera. Uh, and also, um, let's see here. So, and then there's a project contingency. That's the other lumpy item in there. And typically on renovation projects, we want to carry 10%. This one is structured very uh, the same way. It's a 10% contingency. 5% uh, of that is typically allocated towards bidding, and then 5% of that towards construction. So we have a built-in contingency um, uh, to uh, uh, account for the bidding and also the construction process. Uh, and then the final category is for fees and services. Um, that would include, um, you know, NEALs, you know, approvals, architectural fees. We still have to do our production drawings so that the contractors can price it and bid it. Um, and then there's uh, a number of other costs in here related to um, services to prep the site, whether it's geotech, testing, uh, soils, et cetera. We end up with a total project cost. Um, there are no other funding sources. This is a locally funded project. Uh, and then the estimated uh, bond amount uh, before, uh, before interest. And we'll get to that at the, end of the, uh, at the end of the slide, at the end of the presentation. So now I'm just gonna go right into North Berwick, um, uh, Ashley, and then I'll bring uh, Neil up for the plans. Why don't I do the overview, okay? Okay. So uh, with, most, with all three of these schools, um, the upgrades are, uh, follow the same kind of patterns in a way that we need to provide ADA upgrades. We're increasing the safety both on the site and with the building with having a single point of entry. Uh, all three schools are being sprinkled right now. I think you've seen some of the articles in the paper or what's happened in some of our other schools. We like non-combustible construction. We like sprinkled buildings. That's a big plus for the building. It'll help on the construction side so we don't have to get into a lot of uh, extra detailing because they're not sprinkled. Uh, so for North Berwick, current capacity, we have 13 regular classrooms. The proposed design takes us to 26 classrooms or 416 students. It includes six pre-K uh, K rooms. It replaces the four uh, modular uh, classrooms that are on the site. 
uh, provides a single point of entry. One of the things with North Berwick, when you see the plans and Ashley talks about them, is that entry is really hidden on the inside of the plan. It's hard to see who's approaching, parent drop off, bus drop off. Uh, so we've really pulled that out in the design to make that work. Uh, that increases the, the visibility uh, and oversight of the entry. Um, that was one of the things early on that was uh, uh, pointed out by the building committee that that's one of the goals on all three is to increase the safety. So that, that is exactly what we've done. Um, provided separate parent and drop, uh, parent and bus drop off areas. There are two loops. We want to prevent the kids from running through the parking lots or running through uh, stacked up traffic. So we've achieved that. Uh, we've increased the parking and I think that's typical on all three of these sites. Uh, North Berwick and Hussey are a little bit tighter. They're not as land rich as uh, Lebanon Hansen. Uh, Lebanon Hansen has a little bit more elbow room. Uh, we've expanded the learning commons on uh, North Berwick and, and to uh, include a maker space as well. So I think uh, Ashley just referenced that um, on the previous project, but we're trying to get some sort of a maker space within the, the library. Uh, we've got an expanded kitchen and cafeteria area, uh, expanded administration of nurse suites. Um, health wellness has become uh, more important, especially in this last year, of having places to um, uh, quarantine, keep people separate, have reasonable sized spaces for exams, et cetera. So all three of these nurses' suites are being uh, upgraded. Um, North Berwick has an enclosed uh, courtyard in or outdoor classroom. Um, uh, that's kind of a nice feature of the North Berwick plan, uh, especially considering what happened this last year. Uh, ADA upgrades at existing bathrooms and stairs. So um, the existing bathrooms in all three of these schools uh, really um, uh, don't meet ADA. Uh, these schools were designed before ADA became law, so uh, we're upgrading the, the bathrooms as part of the, this uh, process. And the addition will be air conditioned for summertime use. And uh, North Berwick, we're uh, proposing a new ball field, a multi-purpose field, and upgraded playgrounds. So that's kind of the big, the big scope and the features of North Berwick. And I'm going to turn it over to Neil right now to go through the site plan. Thanks, Alan. Um, so, yeah, as he, uh, as Alan described, um, the the site as is uh, is going to be it's going to be uh, uh, modified quite a bit from from what you see now. Um, existing uh, on site is uh, the NBA uh, uh, T-ball field uh, down to the south, which will, as he mentioned, need to be uh, relocated with this with this uh, this expansion. Uh, currently, the uh, the parking lot that comes in uh, through Varney Road uh, is just a simple loop that loops uh, all the way around in front of the school uh, and both both the parent drop-off and the buses utilize this loop which is, is something we try to get away from to to separate those two uh, those two different traffic paths uh, currently there is uh, a semi-permanent modular that that houses uh, the older grades out on this site uh, the expansion will uh, eliminate that and work that into the building um, existing the existing uh, uh, playgrounds on on both both sides of the school those will all be upgraded and as uh, as Alan mentioned uh, we're looking at the lot to the north there to uh, increase our, our ball field area so this is one of the the concept uh, for for the for the proposed expansion uh, the parking lot in this uh, and this rendering looks very similar to what it is existing, but it's actually it's it's pushed uh, quite a bit further out into where that old modular building was, uh, and kind of takes over that space. As you can see, we've broken it out into into a bus loop, uh, an independent bus loop here, and then a separate uh, drop-off area for parents coming through. Um, it's as Alan said, this is a tighter site than than Hanson. We didn't have quite enough, uh, you know, quite as much room to to maneuver things around, uh, but this. Uh, with this layout, uh, we believe it gives us the you know the safest path for everyone to to utilize uh, during drop-offs and pickups. Uh, the uh, main uh, building addition is seen here to the south, uh, and that's kind of where it, it 
gets into that t-ball field a little bit, and it's, it's quite a it's it's a pretty expansive building uh, that that's going to be implemented there, and we have a lot more usable space in that area. Uh, again, we've we've tried to accommodate anything that may be necessary for the Department of, uh, of Environmental Protection to uh, to permit these. As kind of an aside, all of these buildings uh, were you know in constructed and implemented without any real any real thought given to the environmental protection. Uh, so we're kind of going back and, and improving the situation as 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 best as we can now. Um, and as you can see to the north, uh, we've been working with uh, the Ryan Home Project to. Uh, be able to utilize a portion of that lot uh, with um, you know, additional parking that will be utilized not just for school purposes but uh, for the, the proposed ball field that will be taking the place of that of that t-ball field that we're that we're going to have to encroach on to get the to get the addition in here. Um, there are several additions you know throughout the throughout the site as you can see here. Uh, all of those dark gray areas are all new additions. Uh, so there's quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of jockeying that has to go around on the site to accommodate all those, uh, but I, we feel that uh, as as shown here in this concept, it's it's a viable it's a viable option, and it would be uh, an improvement on on the current conditions, and we think it would uh, be able to accommodate uh, you know the future use and need for the school. Uh, so getting into uh, the interior, I will bring Ashley back up to describe the improvements we plan there. Thanks, Neil. Um, okay, so starting um, in the northeast corner, um, we have the new main entrance. Um, and similar to um, Hanson, uh, we put the new admin and nurse suite adjacent to that, um, just so that we have um, direct visibility to everyone coming in and out of the building and also um, from the drop-off areas and parking. Um, so as you walk down the hall, um, you come into what is now the existing um, main lobby. Um, and then if you move, move down the stairs to the lower level, um, if you go over to the right, um, we have a small addition of four um, classrooms and that will house the pre-k k um, students and then so as you go towards the west um, you hit a few more classrooms and um, start to go into the major um, addition on the south side um, and that includes um, a bunch of new classrooms and on the west side um, we have all of the life skills classrooms in pink um, and then the more maroon um, classrooms are um, new art and band rooms um, and then in the middle we have a new learning commons um, that opens out to the central courtyard or um, outdoor classroom so um, these spaces are meant to be really collaborative and um, being outside and um, using the library as a maker space um, for hands-on interactive um, learning. And um, if you circle back around um, towards the north side um, and go up the stairs, um, we have the existing gym and cafeteria. Um, although the cafeteria and the kitchen are being expanded um, for additional seating and um, kitchen food storage. And then upstairs, um, it's generally the same as it is now. Um, we have the eight existing classrooms, um, except we are adding uh, a couple ADA accessible bathrooms. Um, and then we have a couple renderings. Um, the top one showing uh, the new kindergarten wing um, to the left and in the center um, the new main entrance. Um, again, adding some color um, to draw you in um, 
and it'll get all of that morning light um, with all the glass. Um, and then uh, you, you can also see the two drop-off loops as well. Um, and the bottom one is showing uh, the backside uh, from the upgraded playgrounds. Um, and you can see the um, big addition coming off the back um, with some brick and uh, similar um, metal panel um, to Hanson. And then budgets. So Nor North Berwick is uh, smaller than um, Lebanon Hansen, the construction up there at the top. Uh, we've got a placeholder right there under the administrative costs and reserves for uh, doing the play field on the Ryan property. Uh, we've got our line item in there for movable equipment. We've got the project contingency. Um, and then down under fees and services, everything that's involved with uh, um, you know, all the, all the soils, the geotech, um, and other uh, fees. Uh, and all three of these projects, we've included um, uh, administrative money for a clerk of the works, as well as an owner's representative. Um, and we've also included um, a basic commissioning package, which is very similar to what the uh, Department of Education uh, would uh, fund in their projects. Basic commissioning covers all the major MEP systems of the building and has been a real plus on projects over the last 10 years to troubleshoot uh, mechanical, indoor air quality, airflow, um, all the systems on the building. So when we add up all of those three, we get a total project cost of 17.8. Uh, uh, um, and for a total bonding amount of that amount before we add on the interest. So that's the big picture on the, uh, the North Berwick uh, project budget. Um, Hussey, um, and I, I would say that uh, uh, one of the things that we didn't mention on uh, North Berwick is on the addition because the, as you know, the grade slopes down at the back of the school. When you go to that, that addition, it'll actually, there'll be a couple ramps on either side that take you down. So it's gonna set a little bit lower than the existing lower floor of the building, so we don't have to provide so much uh, fill. Uh, Vivian Hussey, um, let's talk a little bit about the features. Current capacity is 25 classrooms. We're taking it up to 33 classrooms uh, for a total of 528 students, including uh, uh, pre-K and K. Uh, actually, we have 12 pre-K K rooms. Uh, Vivian Hussey, uh, is a pre-K will be a pre-K through three, where Lebanon, Hanson, and North Berwick will be pre-K through five. Um, so it's for for younger kids, younger age group, uh, so to speak. Uh, it replaces the one modular classroom. It provides a single point of entry. Uh, one of the things now on Hussey uh, from day one that is somewhat problematic is somebody can come into the school uh, without a control point, they have to, they're already into the school before they get to administration. So that's one of the things that we're, we're trying to have that control point, that visibility uh, right at the front vestibule. So we need uh, an interface with that vestibule. Uh, provides a separated parent bus uh, drop-off areas. Uh, Neil has been working on this site to uh, choreograph the cars and the buses long before we showed up. That was already in progress. So we're just really trying to continue with that. And I think as you look at the plans, we've also allowed for a two-classroom addition onto Hussey um, as we go forward. But this will be it for Hussey. This Hussey site is, this is gonna be the, the, the last addition to that site. The reason I say that is the parking and the um, stormwater management and some of the core areas are right there, okay? We've, we've tapped it out. If we go larger than that, we've got to do more parking for faculty. We've got to expand the cafeteria, et cetera, et cetera. So this really takes us to that point. It increases the parking from 111 to 172. Uh, it'll, it allows for the two classroom expansion. 
Uh, we have an expanded learning commons and maker space. It's sort of a kit of parts that we're providing for each one of the schools. Um, you know, hands-on learning, as Ashley had pointed out, is really big uh, right now in terms of integrating some of the other skills. Um, and so we're finding that in all of our schools, and now it's going down into the younger grades, which is really nice to see. Uh, ADA upgrades at all the existing bathrooms. They're too small. They don't have the right grab bars, et cetera. So we've revised all of those. Uh, some of the elevators were too small and sort of need a replacement. So we're, we're upgrading those. Uh, we have upgraded dedicated special need spaces on all of these projects. Um, that has been out of all the programs, uh, educational programs, I think that's been one of the fastest evolving uh, programs um, that started to take more floor space and, and special needs. So that has to do with uh, behavior, life skills, occupational therapy, physical therapy, um, all kinds of things. And every community is different. They all run different programs. They're not the same. Uh, let's see here. We have the air conditioned addition for summertime use. Um, I think that's a real positive thing. Um, for all of these schools that we can do that on these new additions. Uh, it used to be a real premium. Now it's not that much of a premium. And we're seeing all the schools have problems with heat in the spring and the fall. S schools being closed because it's too hot. They don't have the right indoor air quality. So um, all three of these schools will have air conditioned additions. And that will allow you to have summer programs uh, in a reasonable fashion. Upgraded, upgraded playground and uh, a new uh, play field. So um, those are the um, uh, those are the features for uh, Hussey. So let's talk a little bit about uh, where we are in the site. Thanks, Alan. Um, yeah, as Alan mentioned, um, Silicon Consultants has been working on, on this site for quite some time. Um, it was brought to the attention of the district that a lot of the additions that had been put onto the parking area and the playgrounds uh, weren't in conformance with the Department of Environmental Protection's uh, regulations. And they basically said, you, you can't do anything else to this school until you clean all that up. So we've, uh, we've gone through and we've been working with uh, the DEP for uh, I personally have been working with them for three years now to come up with a plan to, to uh, remediate that and be able to move forward with, uh, with the expansion. Uh, as you can see here, and as uh, you know if you've ever uh, had to utilize the Hussey School, uh, the entrance and exits for student drop-off is just that one, uh, that one combined entrance exit uh, adjacent to the bus loop. And it gets to be uh, gets to be a little little onerous when when you're out there trying to do any kind of drop off or pick up here, and this is also one of the main uh, you know hubs for for events uh, in the area, and the the parking and the and the entrance and exit just aren't adequate for it. Um, there's been several attempts to try and try and improve the situation, uh, but without a major overhaul, it's a uh, it's it's a challenge to try and get that done. So uh, what? We have proposed for the site. It's uh, it is pretty expansive. Uh, we're trying to maintain as much of the existing parking as possible, uh, and that's all. Uh, most of that will remain. Uh, we're going to have to take a little bit of that up against the school there uh, on the right side of the school, so we can have a dedicated drop-off lane and a dedicated bypass lane to improve safety in the area. Uh, and as you can see, we're pushing that entrance uh, much further, much further. Uh, uh, east uh, away from uh, away from the bus loop area because that gives us two it's two advantages it gives us more space uh, for visibility from those two exit and entrance points and it also provides uh, that larger stacking lane to get some of that traffic off of Blackberry Hill Road and avoid those uh, those traffic backups that that you see quite a bit out there now uh, we've got some satellite parking out to the out to the east uh, it'd be more for more for event parking and, and not uh, used every day. Um, and then off to the west, uh, close up to, that, uh, to the wetland out there, uh, is remote parking that most likely would be uh, a, a staff parking area. Um, and as same as in the other site plans, that dark area that's shown there is the, the actual building addition. Uh, it was a 
point of emphasis, we tried to keep that, tried to keep that footprint as much as we could on the existing, uh, you know, paved uh, playground area out there, because uh, that helps out with, you know, lessens the impact uh, environmentally for the site. Um, there will be an entirely new uh, playground area. Uh, we're going to have to uh, relocate that and push that a little further away from, away from the wetland and the natural resource out there, and that's going to be upgraded with. Uh, with you know some ADA, some accessible, uh, some accessible uh, playground equipment, and uh, just upgraded in general. It's 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 outlived its its useful life, and uh, everything out there really should be upgraded. Um, up at the road at Blackberry Hill, uh, there are there are quite a few wetlands that the uh, DEP wanted us to try and try and preserve, and we kind of we struck a balance with them and. Um, we're actually utilizing those for stormwater treatment now, so they're they're kind of neat little areas that you can uh, you can use as kind of you know, part of an outdoor classroom to show uh, show the kids how some of the environmental treatment works and and bring some of that into the curriculum. Um, we are uh, utilizing quite a bit of area to the uh, to the east of the east side of the property that was formerly uh, play fields. Um, how much use they got? It's it's not not. Um, really relevant. We wanted to maintain it and keep that available uh, in case that needed to be used at a later time. Uh, so what we've done is we've actually graded uh, back towards that parking lot and provided, uh, we've, we have quite a bit of fill in there that we'll be able to uh, maintain that former area that used to be a soccer field uh, to the east and regrade that and make that uh, something that's a little more uniform and a little more uh, usable for, uh, for the students and for the community. Um, as I said, this, the intent of this was to really try and improve the, you know, the congestion and the safety of the site. And this, uh, this, this site is much further along in the permitting process than the others. Uh, we've, we're just waiting for final approval from, from the state. Uh, and then the layout as is would be, would be ready to go. And we've also brought this through the town to, to get all their comments. So. Uh, I believe this again. This is a it's a very vi very viable uh, option, and it and it provides a lot of you know a lot of the improvements that we were looking to get when we started uh, started looking into the design of this project. Uh, so I will now turn it over to Ashley for some of the interior improvements on the Hussey School. All right. So starting on, um, I guess this is kind of the upper level. Um, it's the level that you enter on. Um, so starting at the very bottom of the plan, um, so under the existing canopy, um, we are expanding the vestibule um, a little bit and um, filling in uh, the space to the right with um, the new admin suite. So similar to um, the other two schools, we're making that um, secure control point um, when you uh, arrive to the building um, and to give visibility to um, the parking and drop-off loops. Um, and then on the right, um, you have some existing classrooms and um, across the hall is um, the guidance suite um, and then a few um, special needs spaces. Um, and then on the left side of the plan is the uh, existing cafeteria and gym and kitchen. Um, we're leaving these for the most part, um, except for um, we're adding some uh, accessible bathrooms. Um, and then across the hall from the cafeteria is the um, music room. And then on the top wing, um, we have a we have a full grade. Uh, I think it's second grade, um, and then across is uh, a few more special needs spaces in pink. Um, and then if you go downstairs, um, we have the new wing that is um, on the right, and it connects to the existing building through uh, two connectors. Um, so this will be uh, a pre-K-K wing, um, so it'll house all of the new pre-K and K classrooms. Um, and then on the bottom of the existing 
building is um, the third grade. Um, and then across from that is the new learn, uh, expanded learning commons, um, which also includes a maker space um, like the other two. And it also um, opens up to the courtyard, which can also be used as an outdoor classroom. Um, and then we have some more, we have another grade uh, wing up top. And so here are some 3D images. Um, the top left is looking at the courtyard. Um, the top right is looking at uh, the, well, somewhat new main entrance. Um, the, existing, the canopy is um, existing and it's going to stay. Um, but you can see the um, gray portion, which is the new admin suite. Um, and then at the bottom is uh, looking at the pre-KK wing um, from the parking, uh, parking lot. All right. So Hussey, Hussey is the smallest ones and smallest one in terms of the budget uh, construction up at the top. Uh, administrative costs and reserves, a second line item, same, same kind of structure in terms of percentage of having furnishings, having technology, uh, having a 10% project contingency, 5% bidding, 5% construction, and then fees and services. Um, same uh, structure in terms of owner's representative, clerk of the works, uh, commissioning. Um, so those three categories total uh, 13 million 194 um, before we add um, the interest on the bond. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to, and I'm, we'll come back and I'll I put all those costs into one slide, but um, one of the things I wanted to touch bases on is the estimated energy costs for the new additions um, going forward, they're bigger schools, uh, so they cost money to run. Uh, the good news is that we can do really well on those. Um, and uh, so we look at the utility cost in terms of uh, the gross new square footage. The utility cost is 65 cents a square foot. So you can see on Hussey, uh, approximately $10,000 North Berwick, uh, 20,000 Hanson, uh, 28 for a total utility cost. But then we deduct to Lebanon because we're not we're not going to be running Lebanon anymore. And Lebanon is uh, expensive. It's expensive. And it's not, um, it doesn't include all the bells and whistles either um, in terms of ventilation, uh, amount of CFM per student, and air changes per hour. So all these new additions uh, really uh, take it to the next level and are something that you can use during the summertime. So uh, when we deduct uh, Lebanon, we end up with additional utility costs of $24,000, basically. So we're looking at, you'll see up there at the top, energy, estimated energy costs for new additions assumes an EUI of 25 to 28 and a cost of 65 cents a square foot. Okay, that's all in. That's plug load, lighting, fuel, heating, and cooling. And... Um, you know, uh, as I said, you can't compare that to Lebanon because Lebanon didn't have the same codes at the time for ventilation and everything else, but we're able to achieve an energy use intensity, the EUI, of uh, 25 to 28. And right now, a code-compliant building is probably, we're seeing somewhere around 35 or 40, so we're doing better than that um, just on our technologies and our experience and what we're able to bring to some of these projects. So uh, on top of that, we have um, you know, uh, operating and maintenance costs uh, that we need to add into the project. So the additional, when you go through all of this, the additional O&M costs 
are 11,624. We're definitely looking at low maintenance materials, easy to maintain, durability is high on the list. And so the cost summary really takes the projected cost um, and it adds those, uh, it adds the approximate interest to it. We have a total project cost uh, and everything that I showed on that spreadsheet of uh, a little over 57 million and the approximate interest you can see there for a total uh, project cost with the interest of a little bit over 70 million. The additional utility costs have to be added in per year of about 24,000 and additional O&M costs at 11, a little over $11,000. And um, so that's kind of the big picture uh, in terms of uh, upgrades to all of these three schools. Uh, when it is all said and done for all three of these schools, we're really, um, we're really taking the capacity of what you have right now, which is about 1,100 students, and we're taking that up to approximately 1,500 students. And that is looking at where we've loaded all the classrooms, like 16 students per classroom. And uh, we know there's some flexibility in that number. You know, it can go up, you know, 16 to 22, something like that. Plus, we have uh, dedicated uh, special uh, needs classrooms uh, as well uh, that also affords another degree of flexibility in the plan. So I'm, as you look at this investment, you think about how long it will last. Uh, typically, with the Department of Education, we project at least 10 years into the future of these investments that this will accommodate that growth. Uh, some of the enrollment projections have been, how would you say, somewhat flat, uh, but they, you know, a lot of has happened since those were done and we're seeing more housing starts in your area um, and uh, more business activity. So I think that's gonna add on to that need. So we feel really comfortable with what we're seeing here with these plans in order to accommodate enrollments well into the future. So um, that's the big picture on the schedule. Um, hopefully, um, you know, it's, it, it doesn't happen overnight. This is a process. With a positive referendum in November, it's gonna take us some time to put together our design documents. Uh, typically, it takes us, you know, eight to 12 months. We have three schools here that we have to put together uh, construction documents and get approvals. Um, so if we're, we're looking at November 21 complete uh, or November 21 to November 22 to complete our bid documents. Um, we would do what's called QAQC, quality control and review, next November to February uh, of 23. Uh, project goes out to bid March 23, April 23. Uh, typically it takes two years to build a school if we do all three at the same time. Um, uh, it, it's still two years. Uh, and then uh, substantial completion move in July 1st, 2025. I think one of the nice things about all three of these schools is we can do the addition, okay? We can do the addition and then move into it and then take down Lebanon. We can do the addition to Hussey, right? Almost as a separate standalone. We'll have separate, we'll have separate zones around that. Uh, but that would be our intent on the, on the phasing and how construction uh, comes together. So um, the last slide uh, I want to share with you is the, uh, um, the interest going forward. And I don't know if Denise, want, do you want to talk about that? Or Audra, do you want to talk about that real quickly? And then we're going to open it up for questions. Okie dokie. For those of you who had seen our first presentation, this slide was not on it. This is a new addition um, to it. So I'm just going to read the bullet points and then I will explain year one, year two. So these costs are funded through the same cost sharing formula used for the annual MSAD 60 budgets. Fiscal year 22 town valuations and percent were used to calculate the estimates above. Annual debt service payments will be higher in the early years of a 20-year bond, declining each year throughout the life of the bond. Two-year estimated increase is in addition to the one-year increase. Starting in year three, costs of debt repayments decrease each year. These amounts are estimates only, 
actual borrowing costs may vary. So these figures represent um, payment, well, these um, figures represent for a $100,000 property. So for year one, Berwick would be um, the impact to taxes on $100,000 per $100,000 would be $59.11. Lebanon would be $53.69. North Berwick would be $40.68. Year two for Berwick would be 17037 That is principal. And then you include the interest from the first year of the 5911 as well. North Berwick, I mean Lebanon, sorry, would be 15474, and that would be in addition to the 5369 from the interest. And North Berwick would be 11726 with the $40.68 interest. From that point on, it does start decreasing um, through the 20-year uh, bond cycle. So I think we can open it up to general questions. Yes. That's the maximum that's allowed. The, sorry, the question was, is there a reason why we're only doing a 20-year bond? And the answer is that's because that's the maximum allowed. That's, yes, that's correct. The question, did you want me to repeat the question? Okay. The question was um, that we did this based on $100,000, but the average price of a house in North Berwick is 400. Is that what you said? 300? And so that, for, therefore, the money, the impact would be about $400 per, yeah, 500, thank you. perhaps. We have to shell that out. 
I want everybody in this room, and including that camera, to know how difficult it is for me to stand up, because I'm not a speaker, I'm a worker for it, that we don't have this type of money. Nobody does. A lot of these people come live in small homes. Everybody needs to stop, smell the coffee, and regroup. Because this isn't <clears throat> going to happen today. I know that. But when you see what's going on in Afghanistan, and our men and military might have to go back over there, there isn't anything more important than our freedom this second. I can't think of any of this. Thank you for listening. And I appreciate you speaking up. I, I do appreciate it. I Thank know, you. It's I know, very upsetting. I know it's hard to speak up sometimes. It's so very I upsetting. Well, yeah. I think what she wants to say also is, for instance, our taxes, we've been retired, for, well, I retired from the military 20 years ago. And my taxes have more than doubled in the town of Berwick. More than doubled in that 20 years. This project is going to damn near double it again. And again, I'm going to be a lot on fixed incomes, Social Security, and military retired pay, which if anybody served in the military or who's depending on Social Security knows it's diddly squat. So, where is the money going to come from? Am I going to have to sell my home? This is the home I built. This is where I wanted to be when I retire. This is where I want to die. This, that's why I'm here. I traveled all over the world. I've seen every place. I've lived in Hawaii in beautiful places. And you know what? I want to die right here in Burma. Why did I come back here? I love this place. But you're taxing me out. You're taxing me out of here. I don't want to leave. And that's, this is why we're having some of these public forums so that we can gather this information and hear um, from families, retired folks, everybody in our community. We understand that this is, this is a significant amount of money. We also understand that our schools um, are reaching capacity and we have to do something with our schools. Uh, so that balance is really important. But I, you know, as we've gone through this process, and we started this uh, pre-COVID because that was when we, the need became very, very, very apparent. And um, the timing, you know, it, it, it's, it's tough. It's tough timing. I understand that, and we understand that. Yes? They're playing, but you're going to have to scale it down. Nobody has this money. And when what's going on in the United States right now, and everybody's getting really on edge, we're going to be having to buy food and make sure you have some stored in the basement for what we know is coming next. And if you haven't been watching, you need to get to your friend's home right away and find out what's happening because you have not been listening to the correct news and it's a very scary thing right now and my husband and i i sat there i said we've got to pay off anything that's coming up so nobody can take what little we have left you better start storing food you better wake up and smell the coffee it's all coming down and it's going to rain very soon if no one's paying to that attention, this isn't what I'm worried about. It's right now. And I have to leave because I'm shaking like a leaf. I also noticed you had the energy costs. And that was, uh, when did you come up with those numbers? Because if you've been to the gas pump lately in the past six months, Price of a gallon of fuel is doubled. Right. right. So we um, we have uh, we benchmark what you're paying right now for utility costs, right? And it's really based on 
Uh, partly is the selection of our systems and mechanical systems. They're much more efficient today. Uh, they're able to do much more. Uh, plus, we're, we're really treating the building as a long-time investment, and we're trying to keep those costs down. So that means uh, insulated glass, great uh, air uh, vapor barriers on the outside, great wall assembly, um, and really contained. It's much easier to do that on a new building and a new addition, as you know, than going back and doing that on an old building. Uh, it's hard to get that return back out of the old building. But certainly on the new buildings, we're able to do really well. Uh, so that's how we've ben benchmarked our basis of design and our approach to the mechanical systems right now based on what we have been seeing for performance in our schools for similar technology, which is around that, that same number in terms of uh, dollars per square foot. So we're really confident in that number and we'll continue to do some energy modeling as we, as we develop it. So it's really important to us. LED lighting, good insulation, tightness, uh, airlock vestibules, uh, everything that we can do. So, and, and you know, uh, yeah, so we're, we're able to do a lot right now and bring value to it in terms of the performance. So that's, that's, where, uh, that's where I like to be, and I know the building committee is really, that's important to them too. I, d I don't know if I answered your question directly, but, you know. Yes, I know, I understand. Yeah. Technology can age a lot better. Yeah. Yes, it is. That's why it's important for us to do the best job we can with this investment, okay? So I appreciate all your feedback, uh, but we really take that seriously. Um, we're not trying to, uh, we try to do. Uh, we, we, can, we can do a really good job with what we have if we pay attention and do a good building. There's lots we can do, and that's what we're... Right. So that, that's, that's our approach. That's our approach. Um, more questions. And I, I would just, I, I would want to share with everybody that um, I thank you very much for coming. We need to hear from your community. We have three more forums coming up. And so this is really important to come out and share the feedback. We need to hear that feedback. So I don't want you guys to be the only ones that are giving these kinds of comments. Everybody should come out both for and, you know, and, and voice their opinions on the project. This is a big deal. This is a big deal. So I'll, I'll just reinforce. Yeah? Okay, three more forums coming up, one at each school. So plenty of opportunity to hear more uh, from, from everybody. Uh, more, more questions. Does anybody have any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. That was a lot. Okay. I just want to share again the dates of our next public forums. September 8th is in Lebanon at 6 o'clock at Lebanon Elementary School. September 9th is in North Berwick at North Berwick Elementary School. And September 13th is at the Hussey School um, at 6 p.m. All of them are at 6 o'clock. Thank you again for coming this evening. And this will be um, on our district webpage. And we also have BCTV filming, so they will get that this um, up as soon as, as possible. Thank you.